Good morning. It's Labor Day weekend. Welcome to all of our visitors, especially and everybody. You know, I think in my life sometimes that I would like to be an encourager, right? I would like to encourage people to their best. And I think that's probably what Jeremiah was thinking. I want to encourage people to be their best. But every time I have to speak about the Lord, I have to say difficult things. And people don't want to hear what I have to say. And, and so Jeremiah is struggling with his ministry as a prophet. Now, if you know the story of Jeremiah, you know he was killed ultimately. He was rejected. Now, so Jeremiah is filled with a desire to be of service and help to people. And he finds himself talking about God. And man, it's just not what people want to hear sometimes. And so that's a little bit about the Old Testament reading. I want to encourage you, and I think you want to encourage your spouse and your children, your neighbors and your friends to authentically follow Jesus Christ and not give in to the weakness of the flesh. St. Peter, not using the gift of the Spirit that had been given to him, turns literally into the voice of Satan in his conversation with Jesus, discouraging from, from picking up his cross. There are far too many voices of Satan in the world saying, take the easy way, drop your cross, leave your kids, disrespect your parents, take the easy way. That is not the gospel. It may be born from genuine human concern for somebody's feelings but it is so often short-sighted. I don't doubt for one second that Peter was speaking in his affection for Jesus when he says no, but that, mis that affection was misguided. And it was in the words of our Lord today, just thinking as human beings think, not thinking with the power of the spirit. There's a se section in the Old Testament. It's a very famous part where Moses is up on the hill and he is uh, interacting with God, getting the Ten Commandments, bringing the law down to the people, and Aaron is left down at the camp in charge. And the people turn to Aaron and they say, make us a God. And Aaron does just what they ask them to do, and he makes a golden calf, and they have a big party, and there's drinking and revelry and this and that. And Moses comes down the hill and says, Aaron, what did these people do to you that you would lead them astray like this? And what was Aaron's response? They asked me to. They asked for permission. I once had a young man come talk to me after just a, not long in marriage couple years and a child and he said I knew marriage was going to be hard but it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be he was seriously wondering what he was going to do you know and I encouraged him I encouraged him be the best man you can be pray for your spouse pray for your marriage make time for a good and serious conversation with your wife Work on yourself, maybe considered counseling. I might have said to him, I urge you, my brother, by the mercy of God, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. You know, that was the second reading today. St. Paul says to you, and he says to me, I urge you, my brother, by the mercy of God, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Someone, as I'm sure many of you have had this experience in one way or another, confides that they have a same-sex attraction and they're really confused about their whole life and what is it going to do and what is it going to mean. And we might say with St. Paul today in the Gospel, I'm sorry, in the second reading, do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed 
by the renewal of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Another circumstance, these are true stories. A divorced woman struggling with the adjustment of this life that she didn't want. Her whole life had been a series of relationships and most of them bad and here she found herself divorced again. Her friends were encouraging her to abandon her budding religious conviction. Find a boyfriend, get sexually involved. They were making offers to her too good to be true. An easy way out of the struggle that she was facing, dealing with her broken heart and her loneliness. But she was striving for the first time really to live her faith and discover things about herself and her God. And she was sorely tempted by her friends who were saying, don't pick up your cross, don't follow Jesus. She was tempted by them. She came to me, kind of wanted to give me a, like, I don't get all this Catholic stuff. It was tempting for me to say, oh, you know, well, maybe it wasn't really tempting, but it could have been easy to say, oh yeah, do whatever you want. But no, it's pick up your cross. Get to know yourself. Strive to live a pure life. Let the Holy Spirit heal you. I might have said to her, I urge you by the mercy of God to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. I might have just said to her, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Last week, Peter was the rock. Remember that last week? Just a quick reminder. Last week, who do people say that I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the rock. On you I build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loose in heaven. You have authority to teach and bind. God has given you power and responsibility, a great privilege. That was last week. And what happens to him this week? He's anything but the rock. He steps away from the Holy Spirit. He starts to think as men and women think. He's back to placing his foot in his mouth and saying stupid things. Jesus had a mission. And his mission was to offer his body as a living sacrifice. That is difficult for us to understand. Jesus had a mission to offer his body as a living sacrifice. Jesus is sharing his mission more and more explicitly with his followers. He began, I'm quoting the gospel now, he began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. I was talking to a good friend of mine, Father Steve Bruno. Some of you may know him, the pastor of St. Rita's in Harahan. And he was telling me his homily this weekend was going to be about how easy it is to miss the good news. Just in that little passage of the gospel. So how easy it is to focus on the negative and miss that which is good. Did you hear the good in what Jesus just said a minute ago? He said that I am going to suffer greatly, I'm going to be killed, and then on the third day, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be raised. Peter didn't get that at all, did he? He didn't hear that part, did he? All he could see was the negative. All he could see was the difficulty. All he could do was see was to suffer greatly. 
Sometimes it's so easy just to hear the negative. We hear in St. Paul what I have quoted to you two or three times already this morning. We may hear only offer your body as a living sacrifice. We might not hear that you may know what is good and pleasing and perfect. Don't we all want to know that? Don't we want to know what is good? Don't we want to know what is pleasing to God? Don't we want to know what is perfect, even if that path is challenging and difficult? Now, Peter, what does Peter say when Jesus says, I have to pick up my cross, I have to go to Jerusalem? Jesus says, God forbid. It's like a prayer. God forbid, Lord, still being very respectful. No such thing will ever happen to you. And Jesus' response was swift and brutal. It wasn't a pat on the back and say, hey, Peter, let me, let me explain a couple things to you. It's like Jeremiah. Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God thinks, but as human beings do. Peter was offering Jesus the easy way out. Peter was saying, don't pick up your cross. Peter was discouraging Jesus from his mission. Peter was anything but a voice of encouragement. Peter with good intentions, I would say. With good intentions to save Jesus some difficulty is giving him horrible advice. Don't be the voice of Satan to your family, to your friends, or to yourself. Picking up our cross and making a living sacrifice of our body is very difficult. It is countercultural. It's counterintuitive at times. It requires the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The whole challenge that we're facing in the world around us today. Jesus reacts fiercely to this idea that we just give in to our flesh, that we just give in to the circumstances of the world, that we just have an abortion, that we just get divorced, that we just run away from our responsibilities, that we embrace same-sex marriage and same-sex attractions. And those difficulties are happening in the church as well. I was just reading not long ago about the bishops in Germany. And I think the bishops in Germany might have good intentions, but they are not thinking as God thinks. They have not put on the mind of Christ. They are being drowned out by the voice of the world. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this gospel. We must think as God thinks, or we are going to fall into the pattern of being a voice of discouragement telling people not to pick up their cross, not to offer their body as a living sacrifice, not to be prophetic, not to recognize that in three days you will rise. How easy it is to hear the bad news and not hear the good news. You know, when the easy life makes us soft, The easy life makes us soft and easy to fool and open to voices of foolishness. And Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me and your mind will be purified and you will see what is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, I understand, I sincerely do. I have people that come to my office. I have people that meet me on the street. I have people, that, family and friends and others. You know, these struggles are real. These pains are real. They affect every family. And we do wanna be a voice of encouragement, a voice of love, a voice of kindness, a voice of welcoming. All of the challenges that we face to be honest, to be pure, to be holy, to be chaste, to be faithful. But my brothers and sisters, we need to be voices of encouragement, don't we? There's a lot of voices of discouragement in the world. They sound like voices of encouragement. They sound like they're being kind. They sound like they're saying, God forbid you should ever have anything difficult in your life. 
But doesn't that sound a lot like Peter? Right before Jesus said what? Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God thinks. You are thinking as human beings think. And when we think according to our fallen nature, we are not going to pick up our crosses. We are not going to follow Christ. My brothers and sisters, there's a, I hope you can see the connection here. When a butterfly is in its chrysalis, you know, it might be tempting to cut it out and help it fly away. But the butterfly has to struggle to get out of his little encasement. He has to spend that time working and struggling and struggling and working and, and if you will, carrying his little cross so that he develops his wings and his, the fluid that's in his abdomen develops, helps him develop. All of us, we, when we take the easy way, we are not going to develop. We are not going to become who God created us to be. And yes, I hear you loud and clear. Make your body a living sacrifice to God. Not a popular message these days, is it? Pick up your cross and follow me. But this is the message of life. This is the message of hope. This is the message of eternity. This is the message of transformation. This is the message of perfection. So be a voice of encouragement. And I say to you, each and every one of you right now this morning, I say to you, I urge you, my brothers and my sisters, by the mercy of God, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern, that you may know what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect.